Through this analysis, we examine primary gold as an investment opportunity and highlight what aspects we believe will support and potentially improve the long-term underlying valuation of the company. For much of the past 20 years, various owners of the Mount Bundy project have focused on bringing the Tom's Gully underground mine back into production. This seemed like a logical conclusion considering the short lead time to first production, the low initial capital costs, as well as the market conditions. After receiving limited traction from the market over the past number of years, Primary announced a change to the board. This in turn has led to the company revising its strategy. The previous strategy of the company was to uh, centre around the development of the Tom's Gully deposit, uh, primarily due to market conditions at the time. Uh, however, the new board has adopted a, a significantly expanded strategy which is centred around the development of a large bulk operation at the Russell's Roost deposit, which will include high grade inputs from Tom's Gully and also mine life extension uh, from the Quest 29 and 30 region. Uh, this strategy, uh, is, the plan for this strategy is to allow us to produce a, a large operation in the vicinity of 150 to 200,000 ounces per annum. In addition to this development, we're also focusing on a large scale exploration program within our 1500 square kilometres of tenements in the Mount Bundy region. Uh, and this is primarily due to the fact that there has been limited, if any, uh, drilling or exploration, modern exploration on the tenements for the last 20 years. This change has already been well received by the market as the company's share price has had a significant re-rating. But as we highlight in our valuation analysis, we see significant upside in the future. However, one aspect that our valuation has not fully accounted for is the significant exploration potential at Mount Bundy. In our interview with Executive Director Murat Absalov, he highlighted the exploration potential surrounding Tom's Gully, Russell's Roost, as well as the Greenfield targets. The two key aspects from our interviews that stood out to us was the significant number of historical drill results that encountered gold mineralisation around both the Tom's Gully and Russell Roost deposits, however are outside of the current resource. With some infill drilling at both projects, there is a strong possibility of a resource upgrade in the short to medium term. But potentially the more exciting aspect was the number of greenfield targets that have had nearly no work completed in the past 20 years. This includes the potential for a look-alike Russell's Roost and Tom's Gully targets, as well as numerous gold outcroppings from surface that have never been drill tested. With field work underway and drilling planned for the second half of this year, we look forward to strong news flow regarding exploration in the future. To illustrate the potential uplift in our valuation if the mine life was extended, we ran a number of different scenarios. However, this only considers increasing the mine life and not changing the head grade nor the plant's throughput. But it is likely if exploration is successful, both of these factors would most likely change with a positive effect on our valuation. We will examine each factor in further detail in the future. The Australian gold industry has gone through a significant consolidation period over the past number of years that has seen the emergence of a number of new leading gold producers. These companies continue to look for opportunities that will grow their production profile as well as profits. We therefore completed a review of Australian gold development companies that have the potential to produce more than 100,000 ounces of gold per annum. From our analysis, we identified six companies that fit this criteria, Primary Gold being one of them. The closest current peers to Primary in terms of stage of development and resource size was Capricorn Metals, Gascoigne Resources and Eastern Goldfields. All companies have similar sized open pitable resources compared to Primary. But despite this, each of these companies have a significantly larger market capitalisation and valuation per resource ounce compared to Primary, despite Primary having a number of key advantages, including a lower strip ratio, as well as having a higher throughput grade when the ore from Tom's Gully is blended with Russell's Roost. We do note that Eastern Goldfields may have a similar head grade compared to Primary in the long term, However, as they only recently acquired the historical Davyhurst and Mount Ida projects, 
their production target and strategy is not clear at this time. We do however note their valuation per resource ounce is three times that of primaries. The other two companies we identified was Dacian and Gold Road, which are considered the best development gold assets in Australia, not owned by a producer. And whilst both companies are at least 18 months more advanced than primary in their stage of development, we believe their market capitalisation highlights what can be achieved when a strong management team focuses on exploration excellence to drive strong economic results. The aim of this peer analysis was not to highlight or comment on the current status or valuation of primary's peers, but in support of our belief that the market has significantly undervalued primary at this time. We believe as the market continues to see the change in strategy, this gap will continue to close. We also note when the average valuation of the peer group is applied to primary's attributable resource, the valuation is similar to our target for the company.